This is long overdue. Yes, I'm back. The Lucha Lounge is back and open for business. And I'm giving you my view of the state of wrestling. Now I'm going to get the pleasantries out of the way. I'm going to start off with my opinion of, if you're a fan of wrestling at the moment, you should consider yourself lucky. 2007 is a very good year. For the most part, now hear me out, but think about it. Seriously, think about it. You got seven hours minimum of wrestling TV a week. Seven hours. You got two companies with national TV deals. And you got three companies that do pay-per-views. I mean, so uh, take November. You're going to have at least three pay-per-views this month. You can go on YouTube, Daily Motion. You think of Google Video. You think about it. You can download footage at the very least if you want 24-7. WWE owns most of the history of wrestling. You can get classic matches. And then if you're a fan and you don't like the direction of the company, you can come on YouTube and actually bitch about the company that you don't like. Praise the company you do like. Or just bitch in general about wrestling as a whole. But I like YouTube. So I, you know, again, 2007, for fans, is a very good year. Now for me, as a wrestler, me personally, my opinion, the state of wrestling, I'm very disappointed, for the most part. Um, watching televised wrestling, just the traumatic year that we've had, we've lost some people, tragedy upon tragedy has befallen just the industry itself, and then on a personal note, I've had the loss and just the adjustment period of coming from being strictly an indie worker to becoming a student again. And I mean student in the, in the very traditional sense of going to a wrestling school and partaking in classes. Whereas my education for the most part prior to that was all on the road with veterans, learning the ins and outs. So it's been a tremendous adjustment period for me. And going back into the indies more or less and saying, all right, I'm going to try to get myself out there, just some of the stuff I see disappoints me. And not saying that it, I wasn't like this at one point or that um, it's not something that ha is circular or secular in the sense of that it re constantly revolves um, in cycles. It's just, uh, man, it seems like everyone's a critic of wrestling. Everyone. I think I didn't notice it so much when I was starting out because I really didn't pay attention to the internet. It was just so much of the same thing. But now it's a little weirder because now you're on camera discussing it. Um, but so many critics. So many critics. So many people that want to fix the business in this way, that way, or this. And it's like... And I might feel that the comp you know the business as a whole needs to be fixed, but it's like you know I'm still have that hope that you know the darkest days are behind us and we're starting that upward trend. But I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in some of the youth, uh, the young guys that are coming in. Just they're feeling that they should already be considered superstars. I mean, not saying again that I didn't do that. You know, at the same time, it's it's just disheartening. Like when guys don't want to listen, or they kind of blow it off, or whatever, what have you. Um, I always try to listen to veterans when I was breaking in and try to watch matches, even though I might have had a personal, you know, had an ego and whatnot. Um, you know, I went to wrestling school. I paid money. I went to a guy that I felt had an old school base foundation, which is what I felt I would need. To make it ultimately and just to kind of see the way wrestling has kind of become what it's become whether 
I'm watching corporate wrestling and what's televised and watching the glossy thing about it and going, man, I wish it was rougher. I wish it was edgier. Um, or then the flip side, watching a really edgy product, but edgy in the sense of I'm really, from a realistic standpoint, afraid to take certain moves and I look at certain guys and how they work and I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to get in the ring with you because I'd like to be able to walk out um, pretty much intact. But, you know, I, I don't know. The fan base has kind of changed and gotten smarter and but I still see instances when I travel of people genuinely liking old school as far as the mentality or liking um, you just are amazed what a casual fan will get over, you know, what will get over with a casual fan versus a hardcore fan. And I'm trying to wrestle in companies that are, have both styles to see where I'm at. And really, do I want to go to that s step or do I like the old or the new? Or do I want to be somewhere in between? I like somewhere in between. I want to innovate. I want to be remembered. I want to be a guy that people from all walks could could work with. Um, but again, slightly disappointed when I talk to some guys or, you know, just find out that fans, I mean, they're still pretty fan thinking um, with all their fan questions and kind of markish questions. At times it's like, you know, maybe because I've been in it so long or I've just dealt with so much stuff, it's like, man, it's cool, you know, we'll, we can talk, we can rap. And then when it comes, well, who do you know in the business? It's like, dude, I mean, do I have to put out the resume? Do I have to name drop? I'm not a name dropper. I don't believe in name dropping. Um, I don't mention guys unless I'm friends with them or I've worked with them. That's just me. And I don't know, man. I just, like, being on the indies, one thing I, that's always around is you know, the promoter versus the wrestler. And me as a booker, dealing with other bookers, it's, it can get kind of rough because, you know, I have this very strong idea of what I'd like to do for the most part. And then on the other hand, it's like, you know, but at the same time, show me something. Let me feel inspired to be at your show. Um, you know, I consider it a privilege most times when I'm at shows. And I want the guys that are the promoters to feel that way, but at the same time respect the talent. And another thing that's disheartening, but it's always kind of been there, is pay, especially in the Indies. You're not making a lot. You're, you're lucky if you're breaking even after a road trip. You're lucky. You know, people think you're going to make so much money and you can invest so much money in things. And really, wrestling boils down to you're going to give more than you get. Ultimately, that's the thing of paying your dues, I guess. Um, I know this is kind of all around. I mean, I guess the central theme is, you know, I've kind of been at a crossroads as of late 2007. Uh, typically what I'll do is, probably over the course of the next few videos, I'll do year reviews and then I'll do, come April 2008, I'll do my eight year, what am I going to do, what's the next step? And uh, I plan on getting out there more getting my name out there more. You know, I just wish, like, I'm, I'm, I wrestle in Texas, and in Texas it's just so hard, almost, not almost, it, it, it's just, there's so much drama and politics and who's right and who's wrong and guys bearing each other, and it's so cutthroat to a degree, and it's like, man, I don't got time for politics. If you're on an indie Texas level, we're, we're all the same, man. I mean, none of us are making a lot of money. I wish we were. Um, I wish people in Texas would fight to make a Texas promotion like an ROH, you know, and, and challenge a company to be that, whether whatever company it's out there, you know, to force the product to just improve. You know, fans ultimately can decide that. They can, you know, um, so I don't know, man, I hate, hate to put it out there like this. I appreciate all my subscribers. I thank everyone who watches, comments, questions. Again, you're always welcome at the Lucha Lounge.